Okay, well, hello. My name's Christy, and I am coming from California for the Joyful Art Studio. And thank you, first, Marty, for inviting me to be a part of this amazing day and closing up um, this maker thon with all these amazing creatives. I just want to go create all kinds of things now with all the, um, the fun stuff in my studio. So thank you to all the creators who have made this day so amazing. And so I have another a fun project for you all. And I'm going to be using one of the stencils that you've been seeing used throughout the day on a pillow. And so this is my pillow here and we're just going to be using a plain white pillow <clears throat> little square one and you can fill with a uh, you know a form that you buy anywhere i'm going to be using this really awesome parisian background and i love this one because you can use it in so many ways just as a layer in your art um, as I'm doing on a pillow. Um, it's just, I can think of so many ideas to use this stencil. So I'm excited to share this one with you. And then being an artist, I um, personally teach art to all ages, zero to 99. I have a lot of kids art classes and I do adult art classes, teaching a lot of painting, mixed media. I always need to kind of throw my own spin on things. And so I'm going to guide you through some simple florals, doing some hydrangeas here on the corner because I'm gonna be using these inks. And what I love about these is um, you can use them to paint on fabric and um, so many other things as you've seen. We can use them on ceramics, all kinds of good stuff. So I'm gonna guide you through this hydrangea here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get started. I'm gonna turn my camera down to kind of aim at my project table so you can see it a little bit better and we will get started. Here we go. All right, so here I have my stencil and they come on a great background, kind of like a, a, a fancy sticker. And so I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to save it though, because this is my storage. And as you can see, I have already used this mesh stencil. And um, that's what's so amazing about these is that they are a mesh stencil, kind of used a bit, a lot like traditional silk screening. And, um, but they're reusable, they're easy to store, they're easy to clean. Um, the sticky part stays on there if you take care of them properly. So what I'm doing is I'm going to um, look at where the edge of my pillow is. And um, I'm going to kind of line it up with the bottom. And over here, I can kind of see it through there a bit. And making sure my font is pretty straight. But honestly, I am not about perfection. I like those... Um, Happy accidents, as our friend Bob Ross would say, those just make things more unique and fun. Um, so I'm going to, I am lining it up on one side so that you'll see that my stencil is not quite big enough for this other part. So when I shift it, I'll kind of give you an idea of how I do that. So I have it lined up here and you can see that I've already used it with some blue and that's okay. It might stain the stencil when after you wash it, depending on the color you use, but that doesn't affect how well the stencil still works. So lay it flat. I'm gonna get out my ink. And so I am a big fan of mixing my own custom colors. And so today I'm gonna to be, um, for my background, I'm gonna be using this white, well, I declare, and this blue here, which I, not read in this lighting and I can't remember so I apologize I will drop it in the comments in a little bit so I'm gonna mostly put out white because my blue is pretty um, intense so I don't need much of it you will notice though when using fabric um, it's pretty it's really thirsty so you will find that you will need a bit more ink than on other hard non-porous surfaces. So I'm going to use my little palette knife. You could use 
um, your little squeegee that comes with your maker stuff. And I'm just gonna mix my color. And I, again, I um, don't always mix it perfectly. Um, I kind of like when it has some darker spots and some lighter spots, and this might not be enough and I'm okay with that. What I'll do is I will just add some more onto my palette. I'm always say, you know, take a little, you can always refill, but especially with these, you can't, it's difficult to get the ink back in there. We don't want to waste that beautiful ink. And I'm going to wipe it off on my paper towel. And then I'm gonna take my scraper, which you can see I've cut it a bit and reused it. It's a bit stained, but doesn't affect how it works. And I'm gonna load up my squeegee, just like so. So I have some ink on there and you can see it's made this beautiful light blue color. And I'm gonna start working it in on my stencil, pulling it across. Just like so. These would be beautiful. Like this, if this is a background on a piece of art or a, even, you know, a plant pot using this Parisian stencil and then layering it with um, some of the color transfers on top. There's some gorgeous floral ones that I love that I think would be stunning with this Parisian stencil. Like I said, I, I'm a creative. And as you know, us, we creatives have endless ideas. As I'm going, I am trying to make sure I'm getting in all those little, you can tell the difference, the little white areas. Um, and with it being fabric, it of course is not perfectly flat, but that's okay. I'm okay with, this is just a background um, element to my art piece, which just happens to be on a pillow. Um, so if it's not perfect, that just adds to the character. So I actually like when things are not Nothing's perfect, so, you know, let's embrace it. And I'm gonna kind of go away from the center towards the edge so that it doesn't um, kind of drip down the sides of my pillow. We're getting towards the end here. Actually, I did pretty good on my paint ink estimation. So I did, so this, since this is ink and it is, um, it takes a bit of time to dry. I didn't want it to seep through on my pillow and I'll show you when I flip it over. I put, um, a, I cut a paper shopping bag from the grocery store and I put it inside my pillow. And so that way, any paint that goes through doesn't seep through to the back because um, this cotton that these pillows are made out of is pretty porous and um, they're good quality. They just, um, you know, it's a cotton, so it's going to want to seep through. So I'm scraping across, just making sure I get all that excess off the top. If I see any white spots, I'm going to fill that in. I'm going to put a little more paint on my palette, a little bit of this blue. Oh, hush your mouth. That's what it's called. The lighting. Um, I couldn't see it earlier. Hush your mouth. I love the names of these. They're just so fun. So mix just a tiny bit more of that real quick. Cause I'm going to do this little section too. And um, there we go. There we go. I noticed a little bit of white here. And I wanted to have a little more coloring. So I'm just kind of looking and making sure I've got most of my pieces here. 
I'm going to start up here at the edge. I don't want to go over the edge, so I'm going to come up, kind of make the edge of my little scraper parallel so that I don't go over. Okay. That is looking good. So. Because I don't want that ink to seep. If I leave excess, I risk it seeping underneath in some of the nooks. So let's pull this off. Here we go. Ooh, look at that. And this one's, I did this one a little bit lighter. So here we go. Check it out. So look at that gorgeousness. Isn't that just fun? And you can see underneath my mat board is actually a canvas I put it on. I was going to do some art on that as well. So now what I'm going to do is I want to do this little section. And since I'm not worried about 100% perfect image, I'm just going for a layer in my piece. I'm going to just go ahead and do this little part. And so since I started with this edge over here before, I'm going to shift it a tad. And I don't, I don't necessarily want the crown again because that's a pretty um, prominent image. But I'm going to come here and I'm just going to hold this. And I know I didn't clean it off yet, but I have done this a few times now with this particular pillow. And I know that it will still be fine. So I'm just going to make sure I'm coming down enough. I'm pressing and I'll just lay that a little bit. And I'm going to do this top section. I'm just looking real quick for a marker. You could even use a little marker. I, I know that my piece ends right there. So I'm going to just put that there. So I know where to go across. Okay. And again, this is just an amazing underlayer. So after I get this little bit, what I'm going to do is the one thing you want to do after you have silk screened or stenciled your, uh, whatever you're working on, you do want to wash these pretty, you know, pretty quickly. Sometimes when I'm working, I will keep a bin of water next to my workspace so that I can, um, if I feel like I'm not going to have time to take it to the sink and give it a good clean, I will put it in the water just so that that ink definitely stays wet. But, all right, and I'm going to take a little peek. Good. All right, so I'm going to peel this off. And look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? So what I would do next while this is waiting, take this to your sink and run cool water over it. Cause you want to get the ink out of this mesh so that it doesn't dry in there and that would cause it to be possibly not usable again. So you just use some mild dish soap. You could use the soft part of a sponge and it will clean beautifully. And then you can just place it right back on the paper backing that it came with and once it's dry slip it into your protective sleeve and store it and i also so after you wash it you're going to dry it with the sticky side up so i usually will lay out a clean dish towel on my counter and let the it dry before i reapply it so there is what we've got so now this ink takes a bit to dry on our fabric. But so what I would recommend doing is letting this dry. It takes a couple hours and then you're going to heat set it. So how I do that is I would take a clean dish towel. I've even used nice paper towels before. Lay it over your surface because you don't want the ink to get on your iron and give it a good iron to heat set it. And the reason I want to heat set it before I paint is because I want, I don't want my background image to blur or turn into watercolor and go into my um, hydrangeas. So I'm going to show you what I have in here so we can put it inside of the one I'm going to paint with the magic of television. I already have one. I have heat set this. So it's all ready for me to put my embellishments of my hydrangeas. So 
I'm going to take out my paper. And it, this is still a little tacky, so I'm going to lay it flat here. And then I'm going to use this. I'm going to put it inside this one because when we're painting, we're going to, it actually becomes a bit more saturated. So I definitely do not want my painting to come through my pillow. So here we go. Don't need my board anymore. I was just using that for a bit more of a surface. So now I'm going to look at my pillow and I'm going to decide which part I would like for it to um, be up and down. And so I kind of like this um, crown in this bottom corner. And so I'm going to paint my hydrangeas here and I'm going to be doing some of my own color mixing. So I've got my palette here and this is, if you're going to be just starting out with maker studio, I suggest if you're going to be investing in any colors and this goes for the chalk paint as well is to get just the primary colors and white and you can mix any color you can dream of. So here I have, the red, which is bless my heart. I have some yellow, which is over yonder. My blue, which is hush your mouth. And it's a great cooler blue. So I really do love that. These mix really fantastically. And so my other supply is I have a flat brush it's kind of squared off. This is about a three quarters of an inch. It's one of my favorite brushes. I use it for all kinds of painting and um, projects. And so I'm going to be guiding you through painting these hydrangeas. And one of the things I love about teaching art and projects is I love working with people and finding ways to teach a project and have it be successful. There's nothing that brings me more joy than seeing somebody who, or working with somebody who really believes they can't do it. And then they just do some step-by-step -step guided instructions and they're successful. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna start out with my dark blue and I'm going to be doing three little hydrangeas there and we're going to do those first and i'm going to vary their color slightly because i want them to pop but they all kind of blend together as if they were sitting in a vase at the base and so i'm going to first start out with my blue one maybe you can see it a little bit here and so i'm going to think about that there's a nice square here and maybe i will use that board to pop it up a little bit i'm noticing that this is just a canvas board from the craft store that way you can see a little better. That, you know, that's better. Okay, good. Okay, so I'm going to start off with my dark, and I want to do three values of a color. So I'm going to get this dark blue, and I'm just kind of going in the edge of my blue, twisting and turning my brush. And so we're not going for a photographic hydrangea. We're just giving the idea that that's what it is. And so how we're going to do that is we're going to basically be making little squares so i'm thinking about inside my circle we're going to start with the darkest color and i'm just going to come and twist and turn my brush in that space making different little squares and rectangles am i worrying about them being perfect no and you can see my background has been heat set so it's not going to bleed into my um Piece. So see that we've already got our first layer done on that hydrangea and is it a perfect circle? No, and I'm okay with that because nothing is perfect in nature, even though it might be a perfect circle as a bloom, depending on how you're looking at it, it's not so there we go. So now we want to go to our medium value. So what does that mean? We're just going to add a little bit of that white. So I'm going to take some of that lighter color that we used before so I can have a medium value. I'm not even mixing it perfectly on my palette paper. And I'm going to come in and layer with 
that medium hue. Okay, kind of overlapping a little, like making sure I'm sort of covering the dark. And so you can see I have a bit of a medium color. So now for my last color, it's going to mostly be white with a lot of blue. And so I know that if this, you know, the lighting is going to be up top. So I'm going to think about that really quick and just kind of mostly focus my lightest color along the top. And I'm going to do the same thing. And since these inks are wet, as I'm painting them, they're going to blend a little bit with the ink layer underneath. And that's okay. Sometimes I'm making my rectangle a little bit sideways. And I'm just going to make them different sizes. And I might come up here and do some really short stroked ones. And they're blending with the underneath color. And that's okay. That actually is going to add to it as it dries. So as it dries, they might blend a little bit. And there we have our first hydrangea. Okay, so now we want to shift that hue a little bit. So I'm going to brush, wash off my brush. I'm going to, I like to paint out my paintbrush on my paper towel to get it super clean before I put it in my water. I just feel like that helps to clean out my brushes really well. And I don't get any rock brushes. So I'm going to give it a good swish in my water cup. And then I'm going to dry it off. So I'm going to shift over to a purple color, which would be blue with a touch of red. So we can have a slightly different color of hydrangea. I'm going to mix it and it looks pretty dark on here. So I'm going to take a little bit of this blue with the white and add just a little bit of that. See where we're at. Ooh, that's pretty. It's almost like a deep plum color, like, you know, those hydrangeas that are a deep lavender. Okay. And again, it's not mixed perfectly and that's okay. So I'm going to put my other one right here in the corner, shift it and do the same exact thing. Bring in with my darker color some of these little squares and rectangles. I got a little goopy there, so I'm just going to take my brush and do that. This pillow would look so cute out in your garden for your spring decor. Again, my brush strokes are not perfect, and I am super okay with that. I think it adds more interest and character. Okay, so now I need to shift it to a little bit lighter value. I like to think of things in three values, just um, helps to add a little bit of, you know, a little bit of realism and depth to your painting. So here we go. Our one shift to the medium color. And I'm gonna do the same thing. down here. And usually your medium color is going to be your most dominant one. Um, when you're doing a floral like this. Okay, there we go. And then I'm just going to grab some white, I'm going to put a tiny bit of white here. And my brush still has some of that purple left in it, I might wipe it off a bit if it's gunky. And then I'm actually just going to dip into the white. And you're going to notice that it's still going to turn. It's not going to be a bright white. It's going to turn into that purple color because my brush is dirty with it. And the color underneath, I need a little bit more. The color underneath is going to blend with it as it sits here. So I'm going to come up to the top because I want a little bit of contrast right between these two. Even though they're a different color, I want to just add some white to the tip of this bloom here so it stands apart from this blue one. Okay. We've already got two gorgeous hydrangeas there. Look at that. 
just gonna brush it off actually on my paper there. So our next one over here is a bit of a rosy color. You see that? And you can see how I'm kind of stopping at the edge there. So I'm gonna get out my bless your heart. And if a little bit of the blue mixes in with it, um, I'm okay with that because I actually like it when it's not a perfect color out of the tube. Um, so I'm going to start out with this red. And red can be one of those colors that can be a bit transparent. So don't really worry about that. I like when the, um, the font from the other background shows through and it blends with the blue. So that's okay because it's not going to make mud. It's just going to go into more of a deep purple. So I'm getting that red in there. And you can see I'm kind of making these as a half oval because they're going off my pillow. And now I'm going to just start dipping into this whitish blue, mainly because I don't want to waste ink and um, it still makes a beautiful mauve color. So now I've got my medium color, which is a little bit of is that red and then just a tiny bit of this leftover whitish blue. Maybe a little bit there too. It'll make a beautiful mauve, this red and um, blue. So here we've got our medium shade, making my squares and rectangles. Okay. Here we go. And then let's brush off my brush and get a bit of white for the highlight. And see how quick just one brush stroke can turn into a gorgeous floral. So I'm going to tap in here again. I want some contrast. I'm rotating my brush. So those, my, um, rectangles and squares are kind of going different ways for variety. And if I get it a little bit thick, I'll pick it up a little bit, like right here, I got a little bit thick and that's okay. I'll just pick it up and move it to another section. I'm gonna kind of make this not such a smooth. And there we have three hydrangeas on our corner. Pretty amazing, huh? Even my husband can do it and he is not artistic at all. All right. Here we go. I'm going to dry this off. So now we need our greenery. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just rotate my palette paper right here. Get those out of the way. And I'm going to make my own green. So I'm going to pull out my over yonder. I'm going to put a nice amount here. Let me just put a touch of blue because, um, the blue is very intense and so you can always add more blue but again i don't want you to waste so i'm gonna make a nice deep green and this is a little bit light so that's okay i will add a bit of this blue again remember add a little you can always add more but can't put it back in your tube okay this is looking good so look at that gorgeous green. I didn't, and I just made it out of the three primaries that we had. So again, I'm going to use my same brush because I love a broad flat brush. And there are some great brushes on the Maker Studio website to use for all different kinds of projects. And okay, so how I like to do these leaves is hydrangeas have a big broad leaf but of course depending on the angle you're looking at them they might not look so broad but i like to have you know one or two big ones so i'm going to kind of rotate my brush i've loaded it up with this gorgeous green i made and i'm going to the nice thing about these broad brushes is you can make a nice line so i'm just going to kind of draw a teardrop that's not perfect and then i'm going to fill it in with this dark Green. And if I feel like it's not dark enough, I can add a little blue. 
And I'm going to kind of go in those nooks and crannies of that bloom as, as, as if it's layered behind it. And my Parisian background is showing through a little bit. And I love that. I feel like it adds some really great texture. So I've got that one. Maybe I'll do a big one over here. Here's another one. Just using my rotating it and then I'm going to rotate it again so I can cover more surface area. So I've got these two nice big ones. And the next I'm going to do maybe a few little ones just to add some more green. I'm even going to plop some green down in here. So see where I'm going with that? So, cause there might be some leaves that kind of poke through. I'm going to make some smaller ones here for variety. <clears throat> and you can see the font through there. That is totally okay. And maybe just a little tip here. I kind of like odd numbers if you design wise, odd numbers look great. Okay, so now I've got my, you know, we're going to do threes. So I want to lighten this green. So the one thing with the color green, when you are lighting, lightening it, I lighten my green with yellow first because you'll stay in that green, that rich grass green color. If you lighten it with white, um, you may notice that it starts to get really minty, like a mint color. And that's not what I want right now. And in, in green, I don't like to do the white with it. If I'm staying in greenery for florals, um, because the white draws out that blue in the green. And so I like to always recommend lightening your green with yellow first. And I'm just going to kind of come in here and do some brush strokes. Um, with that lighter green, not covering the whole leaf, just pieces of it because I don't want it to be solid. And then I've got, let's see, I've got those different colors and they're going to continue to blend a little bit as they dry. So I'm going to get some more, a little bit more yellow. And I'm going to mostly get all this excess paint out of my brush. And then I'm just going to pick up this yellow. And you're going to notice you're still going to get like a nice light green color because my brush, I didn't wash it out. So I'm going to come in here on the top part and just give that yellow. I'm going to touch these down here on the top part. And so maybe your green, your dark green was not dark enough, which I'm kind of feeling like that a little bit here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, with my brush that's already had that light green on there, I'm going to pick up a little bit of this dark blue just to touch. Oh, I have some right here. Let's use that. And I'm going to come in here where it's tucking underneath my floral to give it a bit of a shadow. Okay. And as you can see, I am just finding little bits of that dark blue on my palette. I'm not worrying about getting more ink. I am just using what I've got right here. All right. And there you have it. Look at that. Some gorgeous hydrangeas. So now, Again, I'm going to set this aside to dry, just like we did with the bottom layer. And then I'm going to heat set it. So I'm going to flip my camera up a little bit. All right, there we go. Okay, so I'm going to let this dry. And this very well may take a bit more time than because your paint's a little bit thicker. And then once it's dry to the touch, 
I'm going to heat set it just like I did before. So I'm going to put a dishcloth or, you know, some nice heavy paper towels over it. I'm going to um, iron over it to set that ink into my fabric and it's going to be awesome. So here again, it's our awesome hand painted pillow and it would look awesome in your garden, on your couch, for your spring decor. And um, don't forget that in all the comments below, they are giving away some fun prizes for hanging out with us today. And um, you don't want to miss those. So anyway, if you would like to um, hang out with me a little bit more, maybe learn some painting, maybe learn some craft projects, get creatively inspired, you can find me at Joyful Art Studio with Christy here on Facebook or over on Instagram. And then my website is joyfulartstudio.net. And you can see all my classes that I have available um, for painting and art projects and more. So anyway, Thank you so much for joining me and Maker Studio. Thanks for having me. I had a great time.